Hello and welcome back to Legal Connect on iBrand TV, where we look at the legal dynamics of the many issues happening around the world. And Nigeria is still the subject in focus in relation to the advent of the NSAS protest and the response of the Nigerian government. And joining me in the studio, or rather, uh, a legal practitioner and a policy strategist, Desmond Orisewezie. Uh, is with me in the studio to lend his voice into the many conversations around uh, the NSAS protest, uh, the response of the Nigerian government and the state of the nation. So, uh, Desmond, let's pick it up from where uh, we left off. Uh, let's talk about um, how hoodlums uh, infiltrated the peaceful protest. Uh, I, I wanted to know, because in some quarters we're hearing that um, the peaceful protesters in some way can be held responsible because the government some quarters are saying at the point where the government said okay we've heard your demands uh some people are saying well that's when the peaceful protesters should have said okay let's go to the drawing board or let's go to the negotiation table or let's leave the streets and let's give the government a timeline to meet certain demands but well the peaceful protesters did not leave and then over time, we saw that this led to hoodlums coming. And then more uh, painfully is the fact that most of those hoodlums, uh, as they are being called, are young people coming to you know cause chaos within the camps of those uh, peaceful protesters. Now, do you think the fact that hoodlums infiltrated the protests, do you think that that can also that peaceful protesters can be held responsible for for that or it was just a lack of the will of a government to ensure that the right to protest which is a fundamental human right in a democratic society was being protected okay thank you for that i i think at this point from my own observation on the the lucky protest in which i, I at least I, I get to see, you know, I am not sure that it, it doesn't appear that that the um, how how I put it that they were being infiltrated by hoodlums. Mm. Now the reasons for that is that it was a bit coordinated. In fact, some foreign personalities are even even commending the youth for organizing. A very organized protest. People were, they were even feeding people. They were mm -hmm. They would even pick up the debt. Mm -hmm. I would not even find any debt at the end of the day. It was a bit organized. People were spaced. I think it was, it was something that even different, um, different um, stakeholders in Nigeria were commending the youth for for organizing a very peaceful protest. I think the infiltration by the hoodlums became more pronounced mm -hmm. probably that was not at the point it might have started but i know it became more pronounced after we learned of the shooting at the lucky target because the lucky target shooting i think it it brought a spark and heated the polity mm -hmm. and so so many those those that felt that they lo lost some loved ones or in or some were injured or even lent out or were outraged by even learning that there was even a, a shooting. shooting then now decided to 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 um, go haywire and uh, the other um, the other hoodlums or uh, people that now felt okay this is not the time time to to, to infiltrate this and they started going uh, they started going and started destroying private properties Property. and uh, well, the kind of the kind of organized protesters i saw at the lucky to get I, I i i really doubt that they will actually degenerate into what we into the kind of looting that we are seeing everywhere, you know. Mm. So well, now let's quickly let's look at um, security agencies and let's look at the police. I mean, that was the fulcrum. That was the let that was the agency upon which this whole protest started in the first place the police now we know that many of their actions uh, do not meet uh, 
the best international practices, of course. But what can the government do now in order to, in order for Nigerians to begin to reharness and then have that trust in the Nigerian police force? And how can we get the Nigerian police up to the point where truly and truly they can be said to be the friend of the people, they can be said to be uh, the hope of the masses where they, are, they know that their rights uh, are being protected and that they are not being uh, taken advantage of. What can, what should be done rather in relation to the Nigerian police force going forward? Okay, like I was a guest at Lagoon Radio last week Friday and I, sp and I spoke about the new act that was signed into law by President Muhammad Buhari. So that act actually provides for for more transparency and accountability for the Nigerian police, where the police were expected to give audit of the activities to their, to the Attorney General mm. of the Federation, and provides for so many innovative provisions that will actually make the police work, including community policing and the rest. So, if this if if this is true, if we let the act, the act is a 2020 act. I'm not really become much operational after mm -hmm. for people to even appreciate the effect whether to actually change anything but i know it goes beyond that the 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 um, police force has been um uh let, let me just put it the institution it goes it goes to the very institution where money using using money to uh, achieve a lot of things appears to be almost internalized and that is what we we really need to speak out against you know so the the police must ensure that they provide the right services to the people and they must be seen to do so because it's not just by signing new law it's also mm -hmm. they also need to they need to in fact they need to unlearn so many things and relearn mm -hmm. so i i try to think that training continuous training sh should be one of the one of the um, way out for mm -hmm. the Nigerian police and uh, a culture of transparency mm -hmm. and accountability must be internalized by a very firm a very firm leadership mm -hmm. to ensure that the police force because it's all about trust people don't even trust the police, the police. and that is our greatest problem where where there's where there's a loss of trust then there is some always a chaos where people cannot trust the police to to secure them. Then, uh, and the purpose of even establishing the police have nearly been defeated. So the police really, the, a lot of reforms must be made. But I think key of that is to ensure that there is a sufficient level of training mm -hmm. and there is um, a firm culture mm -hmm. of transparency and accountability in the operations of the police. So if as a way out to shooting uh, citizens, unarmed citizens, that is, as has been reported, then if it, if it needs to get to the idea of putting a video camera mm -hmm. on, on each police, any police wearing a video camera, then it needs to, because the lives of the police, the, the, the lives of even the police and the citizens matter, mm -hmm. you know? And Nigerians, taxes received from Nigerians are what I used to pay the police. So when there are extrajudicial killings, then it's it's more, it's, it's more like a, a, you know it's it's actually let me just mm -hmm. put it unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So I think the Nigerian police has a lot of reforms. So I really need to. Part of those reforms, will you subscribe to this decentralization of the police, like the creation of state policing and uh, that debate? I know that debate yes. is currently going on. Is this something you subscribe to? I actually subscribe to the decentralization of the police because, just like in other crimes, the police should be controlled at the at the um, federating level. units, you know, and even at the local units. So those are the people that really understand where the crisis are. And they they know what is going on within their community. You can bring someone from, pull someone from 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 Kano to come and solve a problem in um, Uma here, mm. or post someone from Imo to come and solve problem in Zafara. So 
but the people within the area know the perennial problems that face the security challenges that face so they need to be decentralization of police and this issue of policing is what have led the southwest governors mm -hmm. to set up their individual state mm -hmm. security network which they call the Amoteku. Mm -hmm. you know so with the in some states that become operational like i know ondo has done that and the kitty and some other states so let's see how that will how that will, that will play out whether it will not be another avenue for the governors to to um, to intimidate the, the political mm -hmm. opponent because so some of these insurance of the state have been found to be abused by those in power. Mm -hmm. So whether this uh, call for state police is not just um, a small screen mm -hmm. for for the state governors or whoever controls them at the state level to use them to to to, oh, to yes exactly to steal the oppositions in their in their in their locality. So we need to be very careful about this. But it's factually. A, it's actually an idea whose time has come mm -hmm. and we must really look at the, we can really explore that opportunities to to decentralize the police force and the, the new act already provides for community policing working with the vigilantes and whatever mm -hmm. to ensure that each locality is well protected so and that's what the, the various security networks of states in south are supposed to achieve, supposed to achieve. so uh, i think um, um, the governors too so enough mm -hmm. fairness to them also need to be in control of of um, the security apparatus mm -hmm. in the state because you can't be answering the chief security officer of the state, state and, and no one answers to you nobody takes them seriously imagine where a governor is in opposition with the federal government mm -hmm. it becomes almost useless in the state police take decision without him you know it almost becomes like it's mm -hmm. it, it counts for nothing and um, that shouldn't be so in that situation, I think that the, mm -hmm. in as much as we know that there is also an angle to it, mm -hmm. which it can eventually be used for tyrannical purposes. Mm -hmm. But the overall good is that the generality of the people and their lives are secured in wherever they find themselves. That should be the overriding objective mm -hmm. as to whether it should be hijacked by any, any uh, forces. It should be the laws should be able to provide for accountability mechanisms and um, checks to ensure that that uh, no one person now becomes the uh, uncommanded commander mm. in such uh, states. Yeah, yeah. But then, uh, to take your final words, we know tensions are still high. Um, so, if you were to be in a position to uh, lend a few words to the government and then to young people as well, because I mean. Like you rightly mentioned during the course of the conversation, young people have been able to prove that they are ready to take over the mantle of leadership in the country. What are your thoughts to your final words to the government? And then uh, say in a bit to also continue to encourage young people who believe that it's time for us to have a better country. What would you like to say to the government as well as to Nigerians as well, but more emphasis on young people who are trying to change the narrative of the Nigerian state at this time? I think the government must begin to encourage our youth. And this, this level of encouragement must be demonstrated and not just in theory. Let them set up you know, avenues for the provisions of jobs for the youth. Let them be included in government, in policy making. And um, because there needs to be a form of mentorship mm -hmm. for this, for the young ones to also ascend to leadership. Um, the, uh, and also, those, the government too must not only wait for Nigerians to do great things abroad and go to their media page to celebrate them or congratulate them. Mm -hmm. Let them also set, let them set in motion an opportunity for those that are resident in their states to aspire to be this, mm -hmm. uh, to, to gain this position. We've heard of some Nigerians that were elected to the U.S. Le legislature. So the question one, one might ask themselves, if these people were in Nigeria, would we they have, have, had such have that opportunity to be there, you know, with no godfather or whatever? 
So those are those are the kind of conversations that we should begin to have. The youth should be there should be total youth inclusion in the affairs of government. Then there should be provision of jobs. The 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 lack of jobs currently in this country is what is pushing the youth to commit um, some youth to to to, to commit um, some level of atrocity because if someone cannot if someone cannot um, afford his he cannot feed himself cannot afford anything he there's no job anywhere so how do you want them to survive you know mm. it's almost like they will almost want to you know engage in some vices mm -hmm. in order to survive but where there's job where there's prosperity where there's national prosperity that now becomes and it, it reduces Mm -hmm. all those all those um, crimes so i believe i think the government must must create the avenue for youths to prosper in generality mm -hmm. and then for young people as well so that they're not discouraged as well because if you notice what played out after especially after the speech by the president it seemed as though a lot of young people lost that spark lost that fire and felt well perhaps uh, this is a project dead on arrival. Maybe Nigeria is not worth it after all. Mm -hmm. um, but as a way to uh, keep young people going and um, letting them know that, well, there could be light at the end of the tunnel, you know, what would be your final words to young people? Okay. If you, I think the youths should keep the fire burning. They shouldn't be depressed by uh, by um, an, any uninspiring statement coming from um, from our leaders. That shouldn't be that shouldn't be um, that should be the source of the inspiration. Let the zeal, let the zeal to make Nigeria better, you know, born from within, whether inspired or uninspired by anybody. Let it continue to to burn and let that desire continue to grow, because. For me as a person, I, am, I have been privileged to hold certain um, youthful leadership positions over the years. And uh, my ideology is that I don't see myself as a leader of tomorrow. I see myself as a leader of today. So if we keep seeing ourselves as leaders of tomorrow, that tomorrow may never come. Mm -hmm. So but the moment we begin to see ourselves as leaders of today, then we, we will now find out that that responsibility of leadership will begin to be built in us. Mm -hmm. So when you see that you have a responsibility currently, you then you need to measure up to that. But when you say like the leaders of tomorrow, I see as a procrastinated dream. Mm -hmm. And you just say, okay, maybe that time will come. And um, that time will never come because we are seeing the recycling of leaders, people that will empower, at the at the youthful age of our fathers and, mm -hmm. and grandfathers are still there are still um, finding their way back to the corridors of power so we should we should not tolerate this and then um, it needs to for us to say for us to to demonstrate whether we are going to tolerate this or not it's not by noise it's not by um it's not just by posting and um, posting that okay we will not take this we will not take this let every youth go and register to vote because mm. the vote is your greatest power to put in who you be sure, who you are sure that will be able to to protect your interest in government let every youth register and with the same zeal of this entire protest let everybody come out pick a candidate and say okay this is what we are this is what we're after if we are going to flood the legislature with, with the youth, let us do, do so. That. So that let us start from somewhere. And by the time we're able to achieve this, I think this will begin to take us more seriously than they are. Desmond Risa was here. It's uh, been an interesting conversation with you. And Thank you I'm so sure much. that uh, uh, this conversation has left me better informed as well as inspired as well. And many of the viewers, uh, which we believe uh, most of whom are young people as well, would have found this conversation very enriching. And we look forward to having you 
again on this program to help put even other issues affecting Nigeria into context and in perspective. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Uh, this has been you. Legal Connect on iBrand TV, uh, where we talk about the legal dynamics of issues playing out uh, around the world, issues playing out in society. I've been speaking with Desmond Oresewezie, a legal practitioner and a policy strategist who has uh, uh, lent his voice uh, who has gone further to talk about uh, the uh, NSAS protest, the response of the Nigerian government and the state of the nation in Nigeria. Uh, it was an interesting conversation. You can watch this episode of the program on our YouTube channel at iBrand TV. Like and follow all of our social media platforms and of course uh, visit our website for more news stories. I am Bennett Joseph and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.